Václav Nedomanský, Czechoslovak former center, who you probably know best for his induction into Hockey Hall of Fame in 2019. Many people were saying he's not Hall of Fame worthy. It could be also you who didn't even know him before his induction. And here comes the question. Does he belong to the Hockey Hall of Fame? Why was he chosen to be inducted? LeBron behind his net, comes to the right corner, out to Nedomansky. Nedomansky, out to Larson. Larson to Nedomansky on the left, winds up, shoots, scores! Nedomansky was born in Hodonin, Bohemia and Moravia, during the World War II in 1944. He started playing ice hockey in his hometown of Hodonin, but his talent was not limited only to hockey, as he was also very good at all sports and was always a great student. Supported by his parents, he soon was seen as a talented goalscorer and after a few seasons with Hodonin, he signed with Slovan Bratislava. During his time in Bratislava, he also played one game in the soccer league, also as a striker, and studied at the university. Sometimes, Václav went to play the game directly from lectures. But it didn't affect his hockey quality at all. He became an elite and unstoppable goalscorer with very high numbers including 40 goals and 60 points in only 36 games played, 74 points in 44 games, 9 out of 10 seasons with more than a point per game and 4 with more than a goal per game. Thanks to his indisputable qualities, he was soon chosen to play for the national team of Czechoslovakia. He suddenly became very popular among Czechoslovak fans and extremely unpopular among the opponent's goaltenders. Neto was a vastly important part of the team that revenged USSR for invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968, when they beat Soviet Union twice during the World Championships in 1969. This made him even more popular along with the fact he was considered to be very attractive. The team went on to win the championship in 1972 in Prague and in the Soviet nine-year-long reigning over the world championships and Neto was an MVP of the tournament. Nedomansky scored 163 goals in 220 games for Czechoslovakia, had silver and bronze from the Olympic tournament and eight medals from the world championships. After Neto graduated, he was obliged to serve in the army. After Summit Series in 1972, the American teams realized there are possibly useful players from Europe, which concluded an acquisition of some Swedish players. Nedomansky received offers from the NHL in 1963, but he refused them while saying his deflection is not worth it. Many circumstances have changed his mind, and in 1974, he, along with his friend Richard Farda, who also had some offers, decided to immigrate. Back then, players from Czechoslovakia could have played abroad after the age of 30, but with permission which Nedomansky couldn't get due to his bad relations with the communist regime. They decided to deflect with his wife and five-year-old son. They faked they were going to go to Switzerland on vacation, but in fact NHL and WHA agents were waiting for them in bed. Both Nedomansky and Farda accepted offer from WHA team Toronto Toros. But it was not all as easy as it might seem. With deflection, they were putting lives of themselves and of their family members at risk. The bill of national hero was forgotten over a night and there was no way he could come back. He himself couldn't even speak English. After days full of stress, both finally got to play hockey in Canada with the likes of Frank Mihovlich or Paul Henderson. Big Nat, how they called him in America, adapted to different style of hockey and after Toros became Birmingham Bulls, he became the first European player ever to lead a WHA team in points and goals, with career-high 98 points. Detroit Red Wings saw the potential of 34-years-old fan-favorite Big Nat 
and made him the first player ever to get traded from WAJ to NHL. Nedomansky is the first player to defect and play in the NHL, first Czechoslovak to score an NHL goal, and he didn't just end with one. His NHL career was not long, he retired after five seasons at 39 years old, yet it was a success. He even became first European player to lead an NHL team in points and goals in the 1978-79 season while putting up solid 78 points. During his last season, he played for Rangers and Blues. After this crazy but successful career, Big Nat coached four seasons in Germany and Austria and then he came back to the NHL to work as a scout for Europe. He worked for three teams, LA Kings, Nashville Predators and most recently the Vegas Golden Knights. As a scout, he was also part of Team Europe for the World Cup of Hockey 2016. He ended as a scout after 2018-19 season. To sum up Big Nat's career, here we have some stats. He had crazy 354 goals and 440 points in only 320 games in the Elite League in Czechoslovakia, 253 points in 252 games in WHA, 278 points in 421 games in NHL in his late 30s. He retired with 794 official goals in all competitions, which means he's in top 15 hockey goal scorers ever. He was among the first inductees to International Hockey Hall of Fame and of course, he was inducted to the Hockey Hall of Fame last year. So, does he deserve his place in the Hockey Hall of Fame? In my opinion, he absolutely does. He was a prolific goal scorer of his time, known for his wrist shots and crazy solos, scored crazy number of points in different leagues. But it's not all just about the stats. The real reason why he made it to the Hall of Fame is for sure his deflection. The fact he was the first one from East to ever make it that far. He showed the NHL there are very good players out there and even encourage other players to do so, like Shchasny brothers and many more. In addition to his goals, this, in my eyes, makes him a real Hall of Famer. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see similar videos like this. Please let us know in the comments if you think he's a deserved Hall of Famer, and then suggest more players who you'd like to see a video about. Every single comment helps. Okay, I guess almost every comment helps us to get you new content. See you next time, guys.